So what is the difference between supply demand zone and support and resistance level? How we can mark support and resistance level? Whether we should connect the bodies or whether we should connect the wick? These questions will be answered in this video. In this video, we will see what is support and resistance. Also, we will see how to mark important supply and demand zone and support and resistance level. How to use resistance and support levels in trading. These things will be discussed in this video. Before starting the video, please make sure to like this video. Also, subscribe my channel and press that bell icon so that you will get notification whenever I upload new videos in this channel. So let's get deep into support and resistance levels. We all know that whenever a price makes a sharp upward movement and it will suddenly make a, a reversal. The reversal position or the reversal level where a sharp sell off happened or where sellers made their position is called as an supply level. The same supply level will act as a resistance for the price when price makes an upward movement most of the time. So this is a simple concept of how resistance level will be marked. So same way whenever a, a price makes a sharp downward movement and if it makes a reversal from any point that reversal zone or the that demand level or where buyers made a sharp entries will be considered as a demand level and the same demand level will act as a support for the price whenever price makes a downward movement and most of the time price will take support from the same exact level and it will make a reversal or it will break this level and makes a wonderful sharp downfall moment. So this is the basic concept of support and resistance level. So how we can mark support and resistance level and how we can consider some level has zones so let us see how we can mark a support and resistance level so you can see here this is a chart of nifty bank in five minutes time frame price made a sharp downfall movement from this point so what i will do i will just mark this level for further days with a horizontal line so whenever price makes an upward movement i will clearly observe price action at this point so whenever price reached that level it made a bearish sort of candle and price made a sharp reversal here so i just marked a level and i just extended that level for further candles so i was just looking at the price action at that point and my price action was a bearish candle and i sorted this candle here and i made a profit till this point so this level is called sellers level sellers created this positions and sellers entry was created at this point so when a price makes an upward movement to the same level active sellers will enter here again and make the price to move in a downward direction same way we will see how we can mark support levels on the chart you can see here price made a downfall moment here but it took support at this point and made an upward moment here buyers created position here buyers entered here active buyers created position and made the price to move in an upward direction after some few candles price made a downfall moment and it took support exactly at the previous demand zone what i can do here i can mark this level for further days once i see this demand level once i see a sharp upward moment after a downfall i just mark this level for further candles whenever price comes to that level i will just observe the price action at this point and i will just enter according to the price action either price might reverse from here or it will break this level since it is a buyer's important level we know that market is all about buyers and sellers buyers and sellers are the main players of the market so what happens is when buyer will create this position he will enter here and price makes an upward movement the stop loss will be below their entry level so whenever price makes a downward movement sellers will try to break this level because there will be stop losses of buyers if the sellers break this level they will make the profit the sellers will make the profit because of the buyers stop loss once the buyer stop loss triggers sellers will be in a profit but if this level breaks buyers will be in the loss so what happens uh, when price reaches the same level new buyers will enter here looking at the attractive price some people will miss this rally so they will enter here thinking at the attractive price same the previous buyers will add some positions at this level to protect their stop loss so both these forces combine and price will make a upward movement so another important thing you have to remember is 
if the same level will be tested by the fries for so many times then that level will become very weak so most of the time uh, second time there will be a reversal and most of the time third time there will be a reversal but after that that level will become weak we should look for breakout rates once the same level tested many times the same way a resistance level will also work so sellers will enter here sellers will make the price to move in a downward direction and their stop loss will be some we're here but once bias makes an upward move once it reaches the same level of previous supply level sellers will enter here the active sellers enter again and those sellers who miss this rally will enter here again and the same people who entered here will create more position to protect their stop loss because if the buyers break this a level then all the stop losses of sellers will be hit and buyers will be in profit and sellers will be in loss so to protect that level sellers will enter again and price will make a downward movement if this resistance level tested by so many times then this level will become weak we should look for breakout trades at this point most of the time second time there will be a reversal or most of the time third time there will be a reversal after that this level will become weak we should look for breakout trades at this a resistance level so this is the basic concept of buyers and sellers the battle between buyers and sellers at important level so we should just extend that at point and we should see how the price action is happening at that point so this is very simple you just need to identify a level you just need to see from where a price made a downfall movement and you just need to wait for the price action at that important level so this is the concept of resistance and this is the concept of support now we will see how we can and market has zones why we will call it has a zone so for example you can see here price made a downfall movement from this point now price took support from this level and made a upward movement not exactly just for an example price made an upward movement from this level for example you entered somewhere here now you will wait for this level because this is the previous resistance level here you will wait till this level to book your profit now what happened instead of reaching this level price will reach this level and it will make a downfall moment now you thought that you will book your profit at this level but price reversed from this level now your profit is very less again you will wait but again price will reach to this level it will not come to this level and it will make a downward moment again you can see price made a reversal from this level only in these points marking a resistance level has a zone will be very helpful so how we can mark a zone whenever we mark a zone we should remember that we will be connecting the bodies we will connect the bodies and just draw a straight line and we will uh, just draw a level from the wick so this level will act as a zone for the price this is the resistance zone or supply zone this is the sellers zone sellers will enter anywhere in between this level so this is the zone of the price let us see the chart here you can see here i just connected the body and i just extended the level here and i just uh, extended the level from the wick so i just marked this resistance level has a supply zone this is how we differentiate between a level and zone you can see here once i marked this zone price made a upward movement but it faced resistance from the lower level and made a up downward movement again it faced resistance from the lower level and made a downward movement again it faced resistance from the lower level and made a downward movement so as i told earlier if the resistance level Uh, reaches so many times or if the level tests so many times then that level will become weak here you can see 1 2 3 4 times price tested this level so it will become weak and once it made a reversal at that time we should not consider for a reversal trade we should wait for a breakout trade after 3 or 4 times of test we should uh, wait for breakout trades you can see here whenever a breakout happens we should wait for the breakout of this zone we should not enter if this lower level breaks we should wait for the zone break rather than a breakout of single level so uh, this is how we can mark zones on the chart let us see another example so you can see here here also price made a upward movement from this level so this is obviously a demand level from this price made a upward movement but when price made a downfall movement it uh, took support from this level and made a upward movement at this point if you drawn a zone then it would be very helpful for you to book your profit if you entered somewhere here and you would have booked your profit at this point let us see the chart you can see here i just extended the level from the body and i just drawn a straight level here again i just extended a level from the wick so price 
came till here and took support at the upper level and made an upward move. So this level acted as a support for the price. This is how we can mark a support level as a demand zone. This whole zone will act as a demand level for the price. Price might reverse from anywhere from this level. So you should always remember support and resistance are not levels. These are zones. Most of the time price will face resistance or face uh, support from the zone rather than taking support from the level. So we should mark uh, important levels as zone rather than marking it as a level. So we will see another example. So you can see here price made a downfall moment here. Now what I can do here, I will just extend a, a level from the body and I will just extend a level from the wick or straight line from wick and straight line from body. So whenever price makes an upward movement, you can see here price faced resistance from this level and made a downfall moment. Again price made an upward movement. It broke the lower level but it didn't broke the upper wick level. So price faced resistance from the upper wick level and made a downfall moment here. So what happens? This whole zone will act as a resistance for the price. Price might reverse from anywhere from this level. You, you should see the price action at this zone and you should take your trade so this is how we can mark zone on the chart again you can see uh, it is a demand zone here price made a upward movement here i just extended a line from the body and i just extended a line from the wick here you can see here price made a upward movement price came till this level and it took support from the upper level and made an upward movement again it took support from the upward level again upward movement again it took support at this level at this zone it took support and made an upward movement as i told earlier if the price test the same level for so many times then that level will become weak here you can see one two three fourth time price came here and after that it broke that level and you can see here price made a downfall movement but it retested that the zone level and made a downfall movement again so this is how we can mark the zone here so it is always better to mark support and resistance levels as zones rather than marking it as a line if you are not an experienced trader so zones are important to book profits and confirm perfect breakout if this zone breaks then only we will enter a breakout trade sometimes we don't need to mark some levels as zones you can see here price faced resistance from the same level almost same level price faced resistance now we can just draw a line here now we can just mark a supply zone has just a line or just a resistance level sometimes we don't need to mark a resistance level as zones whenever there are big weeks Whenever there will be unusual weeks above a resistance level, then we can mark that level in zones and we can see the price action at that zone. Either we should wait for the breakout trade or either we should uh, see look for the reversal at that zone. This is how we can mark uh, supply and demand zone and resistance and support level. So level is something which is indicated by a just a line. Demand zone or supply zone is an area. We will indicate it by an area. That is why it is called as supply or demand zone. Both are same. There is no difference between supply zone or resistance level or demand zone or support level. But only difference is how we mark that level. We should give importance to the week whenever we draw a level. So this is the uh, small video regarding how we can draw a supply and demand zone. What is the difference between a level and a zone? I hope this video was helpful. If you wanted to learn uh, advanced level of technical analysis, then you can join my day trading webinar. I will provide the WhatsApp number below this video. You can text me through that WhatsApp number. There will be no calls. You can text me through that WhatsApp number to attend my day trading webinar or attend my swing trading webinar. I will provide all the details about my webinar. Uh, let's meet in the next video with wonderful content about day trading i hope this video was helpful if it was helpful please make sure to like this video also subscribe my channel uh, take care traders have a good day have a profitable week ahead thank you so much uh, thanks for watching this video